All right, good morning, guys. I got my headlamp point on backwards. Uh, it's still pretty dark. The camera's brightened this up quite a bit, and uh, we don't want any boats to run us over from behind as the boat launches behind us. As you can tell, very beautiful scenery. We are on Flaming Gorge today in the kayaks. I got Sidra over there. It's our first time out in a long time on the kayak. And uh, we're headed towards the Kokanee Grounds. About a two mile paddle. A beautiful sunrise coming up in front of us. Hopefully we get into some big, fat kokanee today. Uh, but either way, I mean, fishing down here in the Sheep Creek area is always a great trip because of just how beautiful it is. And I'll be sharing some of that scenery with you today too. Oh, I thought you had a fish there. Sidra's hooked up. First fish of the day. Looks like he's there to me. In the net. Oh, that's a nice kokanee. Oh! So you had how many feet of line out on your line counter? 100. Is that on the pink or the orange hoochie? Yeah, you got a fish. Why are you mad? You're catching fish while you're... That's our goal. Oh, that's a big kokanee. Got him. Nice job, sweetie. That's like a two pounder. All right, so that's the... Looks like that's the orange hoochie of that silver. It's a peak. All right, I'm gonna change out. You've had two fish on that pink. You can take your time with him. I'm just gonna circle around out here. Good job, sweetie. You got the first two fish of the day. I got nothing. So she's got two this morning on a silver skateboard big eye dodger with a pink micro hoochie. So I'm gonna switch out my flutter bug for pink hoochie. And uh, see if I can't replicate her success. Oh, there's fish. <laughs> That was on that pink. I think he's off. Dang it. Had a bite. Just a drive by. Yeah, I switched out to something that looked like yours and I got bit, but it didn't stick. You like a big one. That's what we come to Flaming Gorge for. Look at that. That is a beast. Love it. I just love big coconut. It's so much fun. That was just on a peak performer, silver moon jelly, and a pink micro hoochie. Nothing super fancy here. Pretty basic. Using Sidra's formula of 30 feet out, clip in the weight, and then another, another 70 out. So Flaming Gorge last year, I kind of the writing was on the wall last year. The fishing was uh, was pretty tough and slow, and it's really slowed down, especially in the north part of the lake. They actually even canceled some of the tournaments this year. A lot of hypotheses as to what's going on. Some people think that it's a uh, over predation by lake trout, and that could be a very distinct possibility. There's just a ton of lake trout in this lake, and I noticed that a lot of the body conditions on some of these fish that they're posting aren't the aren't the best, like especially some of the younger fish. So there's clearly a food limitation problem in this lake. And it's been my experience on other lakes that you can't layer trophy kokanee and trophy lake trout on top of each other. At some point, lake trout seem to just always get the upper hand and will depress the lake, just like what happened on Ponderé. Another thing that I think hasn't been considered and something that I've really experienced on Lake Roosevelt is, you know, when we have high water years, a lot of those fish will out-migrate. So, uh, the last couple of years, Flaming Gorges have been getting a ton of water. And they even did some emergency dumps to, of water to help out the situation down on the Colorado River. 
And you know, when you get these big high water years, I do think these reservoirs bleed fish out through their dams and it can suppress the fishing. Um, you know, for me, Roosevelt fish fishes best during long duration drought events because fish get bottled up and trapped in that reservoir. And it gets really tough fishing in the years after big outflows like we've had the past couple of years up there. So it's possible too that they could have lost a few fish over the dam and that's caused the fishing to decline here. It could be a combination of factors. Though I think one of the things that still blows my mind is, you know, Lake Roosevelt, when it's slow, um, you know, you can go out there all day and get nothing, or you can go out there all day and just get one, and that's a pretty decent day. But, you know, we've been out here for less than an hour. I'm one for three. Sidra's one for two. And they're big, fat, healthy-looking kokanee. So even when things are sort of down in the dumps on Flaming Gorge, uh, they still are pretty darn good. All right, I need to start making this rod catch fish. I'm hesitant to, to abandon the downrigger, but that might be what I just have to do. I'm going to give this four more minutes, and then if it doesn't get a fish, I'm going to switch this to a dropper rig. And we'll run that for an hour and see if it starts getting bit. You know, droppers can hunt a little more when fish are scattered right now. We're not marking any fish. They're in the upper 30 foot of the water column. Um, they're not schooled up. So, you know, it might be better to have droppers, and that's maybe why they're producing more. Or maybe it's just that colored combination. This is what's ha it's making the magic. I don't know. I am not going to run three ounces on this one. I'm going to run two ounces. So, just for a little bit. I don't like running everything at the same depth. That way, these two will be running basically stacked back there. This one will be running a little deeper. This one's a little shallower. Brought that one up on the dropper, and that worked. That was a shallow little rod. Doesn't feel as big as the last fish. No, he's waking up a little bit. No, oh, he's waking up. There's my weight. I don't know if he's still there or not. I guess we'll find out. Feels like something's there. Let's see what we got. What do we got? I think this might be a rainbow. It's kokanee. Again, I'm just chilling right there. Smaller fish. Got him. Not too bad. Not a giant, but I will take it. Limits four here at Flaming Gorge. Water temps here on the surface are in the mid 60s, so not too keen on releasing them. All right, so that was the key. The droppers are actually outperforming the downrigger. That's not uncommon for me. They just hunt better. Well, the fishing might have slowed down, but check out this view right here. Isn't that crazy? Oh, man. That is very, very stunning. And breathtaking. I'm going to try going in tight to shore. Seems like a lot of the power boaters are just... Holding tight to the cliffs. Uh, it seems like this morning I did better out away um, in the main channel, but maybe, maybe there's something to the cliffs. I'll try a little monkey see, monkey do. Maybe I'll learn something. Maybe I'm just wasting my time. Oop. Fish. Yep. It's a trout. Just a little trout. There he goes. Oh, 
Another fish on. Probably another trout. Yeah, it's a big, big trout. Big rainbow. There's a monster rainbow. That's who's hanging out along the cliff here. Hey, get out of my rudder. Hey, he's in the... <laughs> yep, there he is. You turd. Alright. I'm gonna let him go underneath the boat. <laughs> get out of here, bud. There we go. Wrapped up on my uh, prop. Well, there are definitely fish along the cliffs, but not the chromie, chromie homies I'm looking for. That was a nice rainbow, though. It's probably 18, 19 inches. Fought like terrible. <laughs> like, come on, bud. At least give me a fight. But the downriggers at least picking up fish. Just not the, not the flavor I want. I was hoping to get a mid-morning bite going here, but it is uh. Just been trout show. All the kokanee came before seven o'clock. Starting to get windy. I'm gonna have to head back soon. It's 9.30. Sidra went one for two before six. I went two for four before seven. And then it's just been trout. If we go near shore and nothing out here deep. Place over deep water. Well, maybe we should take this off the downrigger and run, run the flip weight on here. All the oh, oh, fish. There's fish right there. We go. That feels like a good one too. I was just thinking, like, oh, maybe I should go back to clip weights on the downrigger rods since it's not getting bit. I was, like, I was about to say that this rod hasn't got bit either. Feels like a big one. It's got some weight to it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jumping. Stay down, buddy. Stay down. God, he's just jumping constantly. Suddenly throw the hook. Ah, oh, come on, just stop jumping. Stop jumping. <laughs> Give me a heart attack back there. My heart rate is 101 on my watch. <laughs> Heavy fish. Come on, give me this one. <laughs> I really want to get this one since I haven't had fish for two hours. Okay, there's the weight. Gotta bring that thing up. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on, let go. Jeez. Must be swimming at me. Don't feel much weight on here. Yeah, there he is. That's a big kokanee. Okay, let's do this right the first time. Bring him in gentle. Don't stay down, stay down. Come on. Come on, swing into me, buddy. Oh, don't do that. Jump forward and see if I can get this to swing. Come on, swing into me. Miss my longer net. Got him. Yes. Oh, that is a tank. Yes. That is a tank. Look at the size of that fish, guys. Woo. Thing is a beast. 
Big purple, baby. And Arnold Palmer Dodge. There we go. Another dandy. Look at that backdrop behind me, too. That is awesome. All right, that's number three. I just need one more, and I'll have my limit. All right, so we are definitely going to go back to the dropper and just do away with the downrigger. Isn't that crazy? Spend all that money and energy installing one and never use it because good old snap weights catch more fish. Woo! Feels good to have three in the box, especially two big ones. Just as the wind starts to pick up, it's like, well, if you get one on the way back, it'll be a bonus to limit out. But that's still a lot of coping meat. What's weird is today is I've done lots of turns and I haven't got them on the turns. I've got them mostly on straightaways when I, you know, straighten out and go about 100 yards and then make another zigzag. It seems to be every time I'm straightened out, I tend to get bit more than on these tight turns that traditionally produce more fish for me. They don't like me eating, do they? That feels, that feels heavy. Just swimming with me. I'll do that sometime. I'm just gonna chill and then all of a sudden like, wait a minute. This thing's pulling me up to places I don't want to be. Okay, let's see if we can get this in. There we go. Still there. Going crazy back there. Doing those rolls they do. See if we can get him in the boat. Uh, a kayak. Oh, jeez. Fish in the net is not a fish in the boat, though, as I learned already on this trip. A nice fish. See if we can get it. Come on, buddy. Make it easy on me. Please. Ooh, that's a beautiful, beautiful company. Come on, buddy. He's got himself pretty wrapped up in that. Come on. Man, that's a pretty fish. That is a fatty. Okay. Come on, chunkster. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, that is a beast. That is number four, if I can keep it in the boat. Wow, that is a fat, fat fish. Oh, yes. Get my food out of the way. Awesome. What a pretty fish. There it is. Fish number four of the day. That's the limit. Man, look at that. That's pretty. All right, folks, there it is, number four. My first limit of big Flaming Gorge Kokanee from the kayak, I'm super pumped. This place is special, even when fishing isn't lights out, it's still just an amazing fishery, unparalleled and unmatched, really, in most of the country, so pretty awesome. Today, definitely just like this, the old traditional standbys were the strong producers just pink and pink purple hoochies behind peak performer dodgers i'm really stoked though all right i'll put links to all the lures uh dodgers and lures that worked for me today i was just using gold maggots and anise and shrimp oil and if you have any questions about this flaming gorge fishery just hit me up in the comments section below and i'll get back to you and just remember fish smarter not harder bye guys